Okay, welcome back. We're going to go today to the subject of tensor product spaces. In the last lecture, for some reason, I wrote this as TSP, which is incorrect. I meant tensor product spaces. And we've only reviewed one tensor product space so far. We've reviewed the space V dual, V dual, oops, V dual, V dual. And what we meant by this was the set of all tensor products, all tensor products that you can make when you take one element from V dual, I'll call it beta, and one element from V dual, I'll call it gamma, and every possible combination of beta and gamma uh, go into one set, and that set is called the tensor product space because we have an addition rule that we defined last time. We have a scalar multiplication rule where the scalars are drawn from the real numbers, so it's a real tensor product space. And we showed, uh, you can show, of course, that uh, every member of the tensor product space has its opposite present, and then zero is also a member of the tensor product space. So therefore, therefore, this tensor product space is a vector space. And this is why, and I'll say this every now and then from time to time, tensors are vectors because tensors live in tensor product spaces, and tensor product spaces are vector spaces. And every element of a vector space is a vector. So when you use the word vector in the general sense of the way we've defined it, tensors are in fact vectors. And there's a confusing other usage later on because, of course, an element from V um, is called a vector as well. And in that case, we'll see that later on that that is actually, in that usage, uh, a subtype of a tensor, a vector is a subtype of tensor. But we'll, we'll get there in a moment. Okay, so with this in mind, we have created a single type of tensor product space. And that tensor product space is, every element of it is a map that takes an element of V cross V to the real numbers. This is the Cartesian product of the underlying vector spaces of which these are duals. Actually, I probably should um, I probably should keep my sort of scripty writing when I describe this v cross v to the duals to the reals, and that's and every member of this tensor product space here is a map that drives uh, elements of the Cartesian product to. Uh, the real numbers. And the way we wrote that down is we might take a, a single a single element from this. We'll stick with beta tensor product gamma is a map from uh, v, uh, v cross V to the real numbers. And we can write that as beta cross gamma is looking for a pair of vectors, say V and W, where V or where W and V are elements of the vector product space, and that result is an element of the real numbers. Okay? So that was sort of where we got last time. That's where we ended up. And um, now it's actually quite a simple process to generalize this. We're now going to take this idea, we're going to take this idea here. And this idea here, we're going to take these Cartesian products and ramp them up to full generality, these tensor product spaces and ramp them up to full generality, and we'll see how complicated this can get. Oh, by the way, I, uh, one other important point is we showed that the, the, uh, we, the vector basis or, or the basis for this vector space, this tensor product vector space, we called E mu tensor product E nu with superscripts because E mu and E nu are both single elements of the dual space, and they are maps from the uh, uh, underlying vector space to the real numbers. And this tensor product forms the, this, this set of 16 tensor products forms a basis for this tensor product vector space, and any arbitrary element can be written as mu nu, some co uh, collection of constants, times this basis. The basis is the maps, these are real numbers, and this is the tensor components, the components 
of a tensor, and this is the actual basis of the tensor. All right, so that's a review to catch us up to where we were before. So I'm going to erase this, and we are going to now generalize this idea. And the generalization is actually, it, it's almost silly in how, how easy it is, right? The first thing we start with, the first place we start with the generalization is with the Cartesian product that we're interested in mapping. We've already shown an interest in mapping the Cartesian product of two copies of our underlying vector space to the real numbers. But, hey, we could do three copies to the real numbers. There's, oops, there's no reason we can't do four copies to the real numbers. Right? And now we need, so we know that the map for this first one, we know that the, um, I'm now going to sort of straighten out my V's, if you don't mind. The tensor product space V dual V dual is what gives you this mapping here. In this case, the triple tensor product space V dual V dual V dual will give you this mapping. And it should be no surprise that the quadra Drupal tensor product space will give you th this mapping. Uh, I'm missing a V here, sorry. So, um, with this in mind, uh, we've now just generalized it. All of these, all of these different tensor product spaces are defined exactly as we define this one, uh, except in this case, a typical, a typical tensor would be uh, beta tensor product, alpha tensor product, gamma, and this one would be, say, beta tensor product, alpha tensor product, gamma tensor product, say, delta, right? Where beta, alpha, gamma, and delta are all elements of the dual space. And the mappings would all act the same way. So we might take beta, alpha, gamma, delta. That is a map that takes an ordered quartic of vectors v, w, s, and r, and gives you a real number. And the basis for this vector space is going to be e mu, e nu, e, uh, say, epsilon. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not e, not delta epsilon, uh, e epsilon, and e, oh, I don't know, uh, uh, eta, something like that. And that is now 4 times 4, which is 16 times 4, thir um, holy crap, this is a lot of, uh, it's pretty big. So this is 4 to the 4th power um, dimensions, 4 to the 4th power dimensions. And an arbitrary vector in this tensor product space will be written as t, mu, nu, epsilon, and uh, eta times e, mu, tensor product, e, nu, tensor product, e, epsilon, tensor product, e, theta, like that. And now you start seeing these uh, objects, these tensor components. And remember, this is a tensor component with arbitrary uh, numbers of indices. And now all the indices are down, and they're all down, of course, because the dual space, because we need to do the Einstein summation convention against these up indices, and these are up indices because that's how we've defined the notation for members of the dual space. So members of this tensor product space all look like this. And every single member of this tensor product space can be added together. It can be multiplied by scalars. That's what this process is, right? This process is, well, this is both, right? This is not only multiplying a basis by a scalar, but these sums are also addition, right? So this is, this is the full, the, the two properties of the vector space, the scalar multiplication and the, and the vector addition are in effect when you see this Einstein summation convention, because you're summing here. You're summing over, say, epsilon and epsilon, but each time you sum, you, you're leading with a uh, real number uh, component prefix. 
And this, of course, is the same for the 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 10, and it can just go on and on forever and ever. So you can make arbitrary tensor product spaces in this fashion. Now, the next level of generalization beyond this is not too remarkable, but uh, let's see if I can fit it in on this page. But I can also, but we've, we must remember, too, that a vector v is a map from the dual space to the real numbers, right? So there's nothing stopping me from creating a creature that looks like v star, Cartesian product v star, where I'm now creating a set of ordered pairs of maps from the vector space to the real space. I've created an ordered pair of maps. And I can now ask for a map that takes this Cartesian product to the real numbers. Well, what object in the universe that we've created, which is a very limited universe, maps dual vectors or covectors to the real numbers and could be eligible to do this? Well, it, it shouldn't be too hard to see that the tensor product space of two vector spaces, not two dual vector spaces like we have up here. We have two tensor product of two dual vector spaces, but the tensor product of two vector spaces would be such a mapping. So what is this object? Well, it's the same logic. It's the set of all possible tensor products of two vectors, all possible, right? And that is a tensor product space, just like these are tensor product spaces, right? Just like these are tensor product spaces, this is a tensor product space. And every element of this tensor product space is a map. And what it's going to look like is it's going to look like, let me put it down here, um, each, each basis of that tensor product space is going to look like the tensor product of two vectors. And the component that creates every arbitrary element of this tensor product space is going to have to have upper indices in order to contract with the lower indices of the vectors. And so now you start seeing components with upper indices. And that's what you've got here. You've got now components with upper indices that reflect an element of this kind of tensor product space. And tensors uh, with co components who have lower indices to ref represent elements of these kinds of tensor product spaces. But it's really completely symmetrical. This, this is just as fully legitimately a tensor product space. It is, it is still a map, but it's now maps from the Cartesian product of the duals to the real numbers. And it's completely as legitimate as maps from the Cartesian product of the underlying vector spaces to the real numbers. And so now that we've got two types of completely legitimate mappings, there is our third and I suppose our final level of generalization of this concept that will now mix these two together because there is no reason why we cannot have a look at Cartesian products where you have vectors and dual vectors mixed together because Cartesian products take any set. You know, you get into a habit looking at this thinking, oh, it's got to be the same set multiple times over and over again. But remember, when we defined it, we used a set A and a set B, and they could have been a set of cats and a set of dogs, a set of lamp posts and a set of automobiles, right? It, it, they don't have, all you're getting is ordered pairs in the end, so you can order pair anything. So let's have a little bit of a look at that. I'm erasing this screen now. So let's consider, we've already considered maps from Cartesian products of arbitrary numbers of vector spaces into the real numbers. We've considered now, then we considered maps of arbitrary numbers of dual spaces to the real numbers. These maps were given by, let's say, T, alpha, beta, gamma, dot, 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 E alpha tensor product E beta tensor product E gamma dot dot dot. And then this one is, um, I'm going to give this one a different name. I'm going to call this uh, R. Um, 
alpha, beta, gamma, times E alpha tensor product E beta tensor product E gamma dot 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 dot. This is I'm putting the dots there to say, you know, you have an we have an arbitrary number of of uh, the, the mapping is from an arbitrary number of Cartesian products, and for each product you have an index, right? Because this basis vector gets longer and longer and longer, where you have one basis vector for each uh, uh, vector space, each vector space or each dual vector space, you have to have um, a, a basis vector that's um, multiplied together using this tensor product formalism. And each time you do that, of course, you need an index on the component as well. And the reason I'm changing R from T is I don't want anybody to ever confuse the idea that there's some correspondence between these two. Just th there's not a version of there's not a version of this tensor that lives in uh, one tensor product space that can be correlated with one in another. There's no such correlation, and making that correlation is an important subject that we'll do later. What I haven't shown here, by the way, is the actual tensor product space, which in this case, of course, is V star tensor product, V star, tensor product, V star, tensor product, dot, 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 where now this symbol, this tensor product space symbol here, right, that now refers to creating a, a, um, a tensor product space, whereas here the symbol is to create a tensor product between two specific vectors. And like I said previously, the distinction between these two symbols is entirely based on its argument. In other words, the symbol is what we say in the world of computer science, you say the symbol is overloaded, right? The only way to tell the difference between this, the two symbols is the arguments. Um, and then uh, where was I next? I was about to say then this one here, uh, the, tensor, the relevant tensor product space is V, 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 dot, 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 like that. Okay, but I'm now, of course, I think I mentioned a moment ago, we're, now we're going to consider a different kind of tensor product space. How about this thing? V star cross V. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do a tensor product space. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let, that's fine. That's fine. Let's do a tensor product space. A tensor product space of V car cross star cross V. Um, that would be a mapping that would take a vector and a dual vector the Cartesian product of a vector space and a dual vector space and give you a real number. The tensor product space V cross V star is entirely different and it is a mapping from the Cartesian product space of V cross V to the real numbers. Remember this Cartesian product gives you ordered pairs and the key is ordered and the fact is this order is different from that order and therefore this Cartesian product is different from this Cartesian product and there, likewise, with these vector spaces are different as well. Oh, I, I think also I, I should probably quickly, uh, just as a reminder, since repetition is a big part of how I like to do things, this map, um, let me just say uh, uh, a map, say, from this, well, let's, let's talk about this one, the map from this one here. Um, yeah, we can go on and do this at the same time. This map here uh, will be elements of this space will be E mu cross E nu, right? These are the basis vectors of this tensor product space. And the tensors which, uh, the uh, components which identify each one will now have to have, will look like this. It'll have to have a matching index for the mu and the nu and the indices on this T have to tell us two things, which basis vector it does, it goes with, and in which order, right? So the first index is going to have to be an upper index for the first basis vector, and the second one is going to have to be a lower index. And in fact, let me rewrite this over here a little more clearly. T mu nu E mu tensor product E nu. And now you can see how this mapping, right, this mapping is an arbitrary member of this tensor product space. And it is a map from this Cartesian product to the real numbers. And how does this map operate? Let's review how that map would operate. That map would 
that map would take a ordered pair, say a dual vector beta and a regular vector v, like that, and it would map that to a real number. And the way it would do this is it would uh, uh, it, it works in a perfectly linear fashion. We actually have to break down these two uh, uh, elements into their own, let's say, a mu e mu would go would be beta, and b nu e nu would be v. We'd stick them in there, and then we would expand the whole thing. We would expand the whole thing. And in order to understand how to do the expansion, we could just take a look at, say, e zero tensor product e one, right, acting on a mu e mu b nu e nu, right? And then this expands into a mu e nu on e0 times um, e1 b nu e nu, where the vector is in the second slot, the map is in the first slot. And this is, uh, now, and then this, of course, will expand into four sums, and this will expand into four sums, but you still multiply everything together in a perfectly linear way. And then this whole thing has to be expanded against that index. So, you know, it almost might be, um, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase this, this screen here and, and summarize a bit again. So we are going to do, we considered uh, Cartesian products of different types. And then we considered these mixed Cartesian products. Where here now, it's actually hard to write down the general one, version because I could have an arbitrary number of vectors and an arbitrary number of covectors. I could actually sort of write this as like V cross V dot 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 cross V star cross V star dot dot dot, right? I could do that. Um, but there's also, just to be very clear, the logic of what we've done does not preclude something like V star cross V cross V star cross V, which would lead to, which, if, which when mapped to the real numbers, would imply a vector, a tensor product space that looks like V tensor product V star tensor product V tensor product V star, which would have a basis of E mu tensor product E nu tensor product E delta tensor product E epsilon, and a component of T mu nu delta epsilon. Now what's important, and I didn't quite get to it in the last, uh, before we, uh, I raised the screen, the, the up and downness of the indices, of course, I think we all understand by now that that is related to the fact that it's got to be paired up and down to use the Einstein summation convention. And we've established our rules, our conventions for how the basis vectors are going to look. But notice that the ordering is important. Mu being up is telling you that it's dealing with this basis vector. This is ordered. The e, the, these basis vectors are ordered. So you have to order these indices in order to know what exactly you're talking about. Because you could almost imagine an ambiguity, right? You could imagine that if, if we were dealing with a different tensor product space, say E mu, a different tensor product, E mu, E nu, tensor product, E delta, tensor product, E epsilon, say that's the one we were dealing with. And we just wrote T mu nu delta epsilon, like that, without any ordering. Say we did that. Well, here it's okay because this is always present to tell us the order of the of the vector space. So we don't we, the information about the sequence lies in the basis vector. 
And therefore, we can use that information to tell us, oh, we got mu to go to mu, we got nu to go to nu, we got delta to go to delta, and epsilon to go to epsilon. The problem is, is that when we get into our more routine work and the classical work, and certainly almost all of the work in general relativity on the subject, what you're going to discover is that this thing is never carried around. The only thing that they carry around is this. And, uh, and, and there's the reason for it is because all the information can be contained in this, and this is sort of redundant. Once you understand, you can invent rules for just using the components, and you don't need to carry around the basis vectors. And so because of this, in order to, to have that work, in order to have these tricky, neat forms of index gymnastics work, you must retain the ordering in T. So you must write T with the ordering mu, nu, delta, epsilon. So you know that you're dealing with this ordering here and not, say, um, this ordering here, right? You don't want to confuse these two orderings, right? If this was carried around, you would never confuse it. But the thing is, is eventually we're going to abandon this and just work with this. And because of that, you need to retain the ordering of the indices. And that's really important. Okay, so what we have done is we have generalized every we have generalized our notion. Oh, and the last thing, by the way, is V and V star are also maps in the sense that they're they're the lowest form of Cartesian product. They're a Cartesian product with the ordered pair of one unit, right? So they count in this pantheon of of tensor product spaces, and they are tensor product spaces in their own right. They're just sort of degenerate products. So we call these, ve the vector is a rank one tensor. And by the way, that's how we want to uh, uh, think about these things. The number of vector spaces involved is the rank, right? So these are rank one. These, v, v dual dot v dual is rank two. And this is v V is also rank 2. And then V, V, V would be rank 3. And mixed tensors are a little bit different, right? Mixed tensors, uh, uh, the rank is, is slightly more um, difficult to explain. Why don't I quickly uh, cover that? Actually, no, I'll cover the details about rank in the next lecture. So uh, I'll see you next time, and we'll go back to, uh, we'll start again, we'll review this. We'll discuss the notion of rank in full generality and then uh, move on to the next topic.